keep it out of the frame. I'm no, gonna... dude. No, dude. Come on, man. I'm rolling. No. It's already on camera. Come on. We're 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 running. We're rolling. We're recording. We're live. We're we're ready to go right now. He's so embarrassed. <laughs> big Big Brown, aka Snatch, all up in it. Let me before I even get started today. Let us see the new mic because you got mic game, dog. <laughs> Listen, man, it's not, it's, just, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a new mic. Uh, in my pursuit to sound as best as possible, I purchased many alternatives. Uh, this was the last one I wanted to try. But since the picture was so good yesterday and the sound was not up to same snuff, I knew how to fix it. I just didn't want to use this. Even even on this mic, you really just got to talk right into it because it's still not oh, yeah. that great. But you look even better than you did yesterday. Now it's yeah. ridiculous, dude. It's um that mic is like where you can just talk right into it. You yeah, because if you move it around the sides, man, that thing doesn't have much range. You feel I me? Know. Yeah, I'm with you. See, now that's the kind of mic that I think if I were at a show. And a brother up on stage known as Snatch was doing his thing, dog. Snatch would have a gold mic. Oh, my God. Here, oh, Snatch, yeah. Snatch would have a gold mic in this hand and a chalice in mm -hmm. this hand, all gold-plated and decked out. like like, And be wearing, like, long Deion Sanders kinds of suits. You know what I'm saying? Like, like Snatch got a gold mic. A gold chalice, because in his chalice he got his booze. You know who you're describing? Who I forget his name. You remember old school when Will Ferrell was like, "We're going streaking." You bring your suit. That guy, the one that Snoop Dogg was Don, always with. Don Magic Wand. Don Magic Wand. There you go. So here's a quick snatch story before we get started, because I know we always have these 30 minute starts, which are awesome. <laughs> uh, one time, uh, the guy formerly known as Snatch drank a White Russian on stage with the mic in one hand and a White Russian in the other hand. True story. It was awesome. That's the story? Yes. No, no, it was great. It was great. It was great. That's Dude. the story. I'm like, what's in that cup? I was like, Hennessy, bitch. And Hennessy <laughs> was a white Russian. Dude, if I were Snatch, if I were Snatch on the stage, I'd have my gold mic in one hand. I'd have my blunt in my fingers, and I'd be holding on to my chalice, and I'd be drinking somehow and smoking somehow and rapping somehow, and I'd be laying down the lines on my gold mic. You look sweet, Snatch. Uh, you would preferably hold the blunt in the same hand as the mic because you can grip the mic, mm -hmm. leave two fingers, leave two fingers loose, hold the blunt like this, hold mm -hmm. the mic like this. It did go back. What you do it? <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't see me do that. I never right. done that on stage. All right, great friends. It is Wednesday afternoon. Happy to have everybody along for the ride today. I will say that. Um, we should probably just give immediate love to Tory Holistics, where you can save 20% by using our promo code Grande. I mean, based on that whole conversation, right? Yep. And, and so make sure you're using our website, scottandbr.com. Click on the Tory Holistics link. Use our promo code Grande. Save 20% when you're going in for whatever it is, CBD, or maybe it's some of that love oil I'm planning on working with this weekend. Um, also, that, that drink, that tea drink, that is so good. Um, so anyway... Uh, Tori Holistics, ToriHolistics.com. Hey, also, love, sending out love, Corky's Pest Control, 1-800-901-1102. Thank you, Corky. Appreciate you. And for all the great friends, if you're a Corky's customer, you refer a great friend, they become a Corky's customer, you're getting 35 bucks. Refer a great friend through Corky's Pest Control, get your money, 1-800-901-1102. And I got to thank Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. Um, if you're looking to buy a home for the first time, let Gary walk you through the process, hold your hand, educate you, eliminate the smoke and mirrors, and more importantly, save you a shit ton of money. So talk to Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299. You want to refinance? My girlfriend was talking to me about refinancing. The rates that, that, that can be achieved today when you've got good credit and you've got some equity in your house, I'm telling you right now, talk to Gary Cooper about refinancing. Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299. 1299. Okay. I'll send some shout outs later on. Like, want comment, and subscribe. Yeah. Do that, please. Like, comment, and subscribe. Um, so listen, I, I was watching yesterday's show and I was in the YouTube chat and I was in the Facebook chat and I was- When I were was, you in the Facebook chat? 
because I was in there for about the first 20, 30 minutes and nobody joined me. He was nope. in there because I talked. He was in there because I said something to him in there because I was in there. I, I broke the rule. I went in. You okay. did. Yeah. Yeah. I went in, but I feel like um, I'm trying to remember if I was. I think I was on my phone, so I should. I'm sure I commented. Yeah. You know, I was looking for you, Grande. I don't think I saw. I you. was in there in the first 20, 30 minutes, and nobody came. So I was like, you know what? Screw you guys. Threw out the challenge, and nobody joined me. Hmm. Mm. Well, I was there. I, you know, I got I got to the show late yesterday. I was um Well, there you go. Well, I was visiting with a friend yesterday and then I didn't get to the show until about 15 minutes in and then I was then I was there for the for the remainder. The thing I liked about yesterday's show that I think over the course of the last 3 or 4 weeks that we had gotten away from was you know talking about some sports stuff. You know, like the freedom of podcasting is awesome. And, and feeling impacted and affected and wanting to create change through all of the current events, that's just, that's like oozing out of all of us, you know? But yesterday when I watched and listened, I went, holy shit, man, we're talking sports again. Mm -hmm. And today I want to do the same thing because I think it's a really big story. Major League Baseball has found a way to get itself theoretically back to playing. I say theoretically because... You know, today is now June 23rd, 4th, and they're talking about playing in a month. You know, so guys are getting to their team facilities and spring training facilities, and guys will have three weeks or so to get themselves really ready to go. And then late July is when, is when you know, they plan on, on bringing baseball back. And so I am not the world's biggest baseball fan. I think everybody kind of gets that, you know? But I got to say that what makes me nuts about baseball is how many games are played, how many unimportant and uninteresting games are played, and the the, the, the thought of, of an NFL football season, every one of those 16 games means something. College football, every one of those games means something. College basketball, you take a bad loss to a, a lesser conference school early in the season, that costs you later in the year. With 162 games, it just, just was too much, man. But you're telling me now, 60 games in total? That's it, 60 games. There's a lot more meaning. And by the way, should be a lot more fun. The Dodgers, the Padres, the Giants, the Diamondbacks, the Rockies, you play your division, that's it. You play your division for 60% of your schedule. And then the other 40%, if I'm getting my numbers right, and now I don't think I am, 66%, but the other 33% is against all the teams from the opposing league, the American League in this case, that are regional. The Mariners, uh, the A's, the Angels, the Astros. Um, Houston Astros. Mariners. Yeah, Seattle. I mean, so now you've got 40 games against your division rivals. And you've got 20 games against what should be your geographic rivals. I got to tell you something. As somebody who's not the world's biggest baseball fan, as somebody who would have lived life and it would not have impacted me in one way if baseball chose not to come back, I'm going to say this. Opening thought. I like what baseball is presenting. And now I'm curious to see them actually pull it off. So... Opening thought, way to go, baseball. What do you say, Grande? I say I'm very much excited. I told you guys a week ago I was very much stoked for what was going to happen. Turns out it did happen, 60 games. Universal DH, uh, a runner starting on second, and if they go to extra innings. Let's get weird, man. Everyone knows that, that no matter what happens this year, we're going to remember it as the corona year. Whether they finish it, whether they don't finish it, we'll see. But I think, why not? Let's experiment with some stuff that we've always wanted to do because what do we have to lose? 60 games in 66 days, the DH in the National League, you don't got to see crappy bat pitchers bat anymore. Um, I think it's very much excited. My first thought when I saw baseball's back and the way they were aligning the, the schedule, we're going to get Dodgers versus Astros, and I'm very much looking forward to that because they <laughs> weren't scheduled to play in the regular 2020 season, but now we're going to get that at least for a couple games and very much excited. Big Brown, what do you say, man? I think I'm happy about this, but I'm also like, eh, because when 162 games or however many they are, they're going to be fights. This Dodgers-Astros thing, there are going to be brawls because now you're probably not going to get any fights because the guys now can't sustain a five-game suspension. 
They can't, you can't uh, uh, go back at a guy for hitting your guy. No more benches clearing. A lot of the things that are cool about baseball will now be the unwritten rules of it will actually now be gone. So if you hit a home run and you want to pimp it on the guy, as they like to say, you can do that. You know why? He's not going to hit you because there's no retaliation because no one wants to get suspended. I think this sprint will open a lot of people's eyes about baseball and it'll get a lot of people to the television to actually watch baseball. And I think this is a great opportunity for baseball to now market their guys. So if you're going to put a game on TV, put Mike Trout on TV more as much as you possibly can. Put Tatis on TV as much as you possibly can. Put the Dodgers on TV as much as to the hell with the Diamondbacks, to the hell with the Rockies, to the hell with the Mariners. If you ain't got nobody on your roster, I can recognize that it's going to entertain me. If I'm baseball, it's not going to do me any good to put these guys on TV most of the time. So prepare yourself to see a lot of Yankees, a lot. Well, you already see a lot of Yankees, a lot of Red Sox, but notable guys that you can recognize that they can run a story behind that I will be entertained. I want to be entertained. Let me tell you guys, um, I said this probably about a week and a half ago when my daughter graduated high school. Every one of the kids, oh my God, I lost my senior year and I don't get a prom and the graduation's not the same and we're not going to be in the football stadium at the high school and all 700 kids are going to have their names read and we're going to all sit out and bake in the sun. We're going to not have that traditional graduation. And we thought to ourselves, that's just too bad. That's such a shame. Gosh, that's just horrible. Being a senior in the class of 2020 and you don't even get your graduation and all the, the celebration, that's just too bad. And then what happened was they decided to put these graduations into a maze in the parking lot of the school. And all the coaches from all the teams were there. And all the, the teachers were there. And the principal took a picture with you at the end of it. And the music was blasting. And every kid had a sign along the route. And it was freaking awesome. It was 10 times the graduation they ever were. Those other graduations were boring as all hell. And so through all of the change and through all of the concern that it's not going to be as good, it's not going to be the same, guess what? It was freaking better. What I'm suggesting to you is, is that baseball is making these changes because they have to. Just like the schools had to change the graduation, they had to. Well, guess what? They're going to change baseball. They're going to play fewer games. The games are going to be more meaningful. The games are going to be more interesting because you're playing against the teams that you always want to see them play because those are the most important games. Then when they go outside of American League or National League, I want to see the Dodgers and the Angels, the Padres and the Angels. I want to see the Dodgers and the Astros, to your point. So now these 60 games become that much more interesting, regionally speaking. And I think when the season is over, we're all going to say this. I like baseball better like that. I like the 2020 version of of baseball better. I like the 30% of the season is better than the 100% of seasons past. Baseball's been looking for something to change the fact that they're an old man, boring ass game, and they're looking to try and attract young people. That could be the answer. It could, right? but it's too much of a drastic change. It's too much of a 162 down to 60. I think we're going to get a one and done here. There's no way that these oh, con God. there's no way that these contracts of Manny Machado getting paid 30 million dollars is going to last for 60 games. And unfortunately that's the reality. Um if it is a rounding success. If you know, we're not missing out on Trout and Machado because they tested positive for 2 weeks and and these players didn't miss the World Series or whatever. Maybe there's some changes, but I think we're thinking way too much out of the box because baseball doesn't think out of the box. They were forced into a corner. And even if it's been like handed to them on a silver platter, like this is better. Check this out. Will they actually accept those changes? Probably not. Here's free game for baseball. Free game. I hope y'all paying attention. Mic up everything. Mic up every base. Mic up every player. Mic up every pitcher. And allow people through social media or allow people through your own website, whether it be Padres.com, Cubs.com, Dodgers.com, to choose a player that they can listen to for this inning or for that inning or for that at bat. Find ways to get people under the tent and keep them there because watching a nine inning baseball game, I don't give a damn how many games are in a season, it's hard. 
But if you find <laughs> ways <laughs> to entertain people, imagine if you could listen to a Mike Trout at bat. You mic him up and you can hear what he's saying at bat. Not that you can talk to him, but you can hear him. You will get people to the tent if you market this better. This is your only chance. Because people like me, I gave up on y'all. So to get me back, you gotta entertain me. I don't care who wins. Did you guys Who's hear about? Cool? Did you guys hear about this? It was a. It didn't even make news, but Mark Cuban was on some show talking about when the NBA comes back, how they're planning to pump in crowd noise, but not just generically like you're seeing on soccer broadcasts. They're saying it's going to be a competition, some sort of app where you're you can you can log into the app and you hit the button. And it like increases the crowd noise in the arena, and it's supposed to be like some sort of competition. I don't know how cool that is, but I think that there's gonna be random weird things like that when sports does come back. That's the kind of thing that when you tell me that that there's an app and you push on it and it makes the crowd louder. Yeah, I think of Mark Cuban sitting there on Shark Tank yeah. saying your product sucks and get out. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that sounds really strange. But anything Mark Cuban touches, I perceive turns to gold. So like, like Browner's microphone. You see? Yeah. Stop it. What? <laughs> All right, Roland. Keep it on rolling here. It is gold. On a Wednesday Wait, afternoon. Before we roll, though, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Because I don't know if you guys saw the over-unders for baseball because I did not put it in the content. Okay, in the ahead. NL West, mm -hmm. it's obviously the Dodgers are favored. Them and the Yankees are favored to win the whole thing. Um, but the Padres are favored to finish second in the That's NL West. Talk about baby. 31 and a half. 31 and a half games. Diamondbacks also 31 and a half games. Rockies 27 and a half. By the way, one of their best players got Corona right now. And Ugh. Giants uh, 25 and <laughs> good. But Giants 25 and a half. So, you know, at least odds makers like the Padres did not finish last this year. We, by, when I say we, I mean me and my Padre brethren, okay? We going for the thing this year, okay? We coming for y'all Dodgers, all right? Listen, I know I'm new to the Padre bandwagon. But I'm telling y'all, you're going to need me, okay? Because I'm going to root. <laughs> I'm going to root hard. I will represent the Padres on this show. I'm telling you right now, when Scott 10 games in and we lost seven, he's going to bail on us. Yep. That's understandably so. Will you commit right that. now? Will you commit? Last year, you're like, I am, well, I was last year or two years ago, where you're like, I am going to make it through the end of this baseball season watching Padres baseball. Will you commit right now? Uh -oh. 60 games. Ooh. 60 games. In 66 days, you got nothing else to do. It's a summer fling, man. Yeah. You can do that. Will you commit right now? Let me let me uh -oh, it sounds since like you're nice since you're pressing me. Yeah. I will say this. You ready? I am going to be into baseball for 60 games more than I've ever been into baseball for 181 or two or whatever the number 62. is. What is the number? 162. <laughs> I can't ever see 81 and 81 yeah. home and road. Well, whatever. Um, I think I would like to be into baseball more because I like what they're trying to do. The reason I don't love baseball all year long is because I'm bored for most of the time. And your you team know, sucks. If when the Padres are hosting the, the Marlins, that does nothing for me on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you know? Uh, when the Padres are hosting the Mets, it doesn't really do a whole lot for me. When the Yankees come to town on the rare year or the Red Sox, it becomes an event. But when they're playing middle of the road garbage like Milwaukee, I'm like, I'm not, I don't have any interest in this. You play the Dodgers, you play the Giants. You know, if you got a chance to play the Astros, that would interest me. Well, now that's what we have this year. So I'm going to say that I'm not going to be into the Padres for 60 games and fall off their bandwagon when they become 10 games out and Browner's still making excuses. But I think I'm going to be into Major League Baseball, not just Padres baseball. And by the way, um, good luck to the Padres. It would be an incredible story if the little, cute, small market Padres who spent $30 million on one guy and then fired their little cute manager and they hired another cute little manager. And if, and there's all the controversy about their, their international signings. If, if the little teeny tiny Padres can rise up and take down Clayton Kershaw, Mookie Betts, and all the firepower that's been added to the pitching staff and to the lineup of the Dodgers, 
who have been winning this division and have more talent and spend more money than everybody else, if the little teeny tiny Padres can rise up and take down the big bad Dodgers, you know I love a good story. You but know, I'm going to have to see that. You know why we turn the corner, right? You know why my how Padres turn the corner? Tell me how. We cheating now. We cheating. That's how I know we getting close. Because once you start cheating, that means you're a real program. Trust me. <laughs> Astros cheated their way to the title. Red Sox cheated their way to a title. Yankees been cheating with all that money all this time. We're going to start cheating with international players. They can't do nothing but slap us on the wrist. Ain't nothing but a little money. We got big money. Look at the stadium we got. We just gave Manny 300 mil. We got a little chump change they won't. Take this little money. This ain't this cab fare. This Uber money. Get out of here. Alex, you grow up a Padres fan? No. Up in Oxnard? No. Dodger fan? My dad was a Dodger fan. I was a Ken Griffey Jr. fan. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really too much into the Dodgers stuff. I went to Dodger games growing up all the time. But never a Dodger fan being that that was the team. I mean, I would just guess Oxnard mm -hmm. is right. Dodger. Oh, country. it's Dodger country like crazy. Uh, just it, You ever have one of those things where you're – I guess, I don't know. Like my dad pushed Dodgers so hard on me that I was like, yeah, I don't really like them. And it, it became our thing that I kind of rooted against them. He rooted for them. That was kind of my thing. Um, but, yeah, no, not a Dodger fan. Hmm. Weird, right? I know. A little bit. Vikings I mean, fans, too. Weird. I know. I know. I know. Yeah, Weird. How is that? I don't know. How is that? I don't know. All right. Well, let's keep rolling. Hey, uh, today, Wednesday, being presented by Corky's Pest Control, 1-800-901-1102. Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299. Tory Holistics, where you can save 20% by using our promo code Grande. Um, SMSglobal.com. Alex, can you give a, a phone number for everybody for SMSglobal.com? Because mm -hmm. they're doing a great deal right now where you can pay a small amount and get a whole lot of text messages for your people. So if you use our promo code and you tell them, hey, listen, we're calling, we're great friends, they're going to take really good care of you at SMS Global. 1 800 676 5500. 1-800-676-5500. A great friend called yesterday. I won't say who in case they don't want me to blow them out, but shout out to that person that did hit up SMS Global yesterday. Way to go, man. Appreciate that. Um, shout out to the Total Tea Clinic, to Rock and Wine Tours, to Coast Care Partners, and uh, to the folks who have created a whole brand new website for us, Wicked Graphics. Great job, cousin Nancy. ScottandBR.com looking really sharp. And um, I think we're going to start adding like our email list where you can sign up for that on the website. I'll, I'll have more information about that. So not top of mind. Yeah. going to get to that anyway. Okay. Let's keep going. So baseball's made their announcement. They're planning on coming back. How are they going to do it? You know, are, are they going to be able to keep their players healthy as people are moving around the country? You know, if, if you're, if you're in San Diego, but you got to go play in LA, if you're then in LA and you got to go play in San Francisco, if you're in San Francisco and then you got to come down and play in Phoenix, and then you just come home and you, you've gone on planes and you know, look, they can do all the safety protocol that they want to human beings who live in one part of the world will get on an aircraft to fly to another part of the world. Human beings will then come in contact with one another. OK, and then they'll move on to another part of the world and do it over and over and over again. That's how you would think things will spread. So can baseball pull this off is really my question. In fact, Alex, I'm throwing your curveball right here. It sounded so like sports wow. talk. Wow. wow. I'm going to. Hey, Alex, here's the, I don't know why you went with that voice, but OK. <laughs> hey, here's a curveball for you because you're a ball plur. Um, if you go undecided, I wrote a question early this morning, and it's really about that idea. Uh, Alex, maybe you can pull it up. But it, it, that that was the, the idea of the question, which is, and I'm, I'm pulling it up myself. Gosh, there's a lot of people posting content. Um, baseball is coming back, but can MLB make it through this COVID-shortened season? You know, one of the things they're talking about is having what they call a taxi squad, like 20 or 30 other guys. First of all, rosters expanded and then having this so-called taxi squad should people get sick and need to be replaced. So do you think baseball can actually pull this off? Because yeah. think about it, you know, the NBA has been making their plans for like the last two months and they're going to start later than baseball and they've got a bubble and they've got, you know, set of rules and, and, and they're not moving around the country. I really do wonder, can baseball pull this off? What do you guys think? Do you think baseball can actually do this? 
it's difficult to say like with certainty, but I do think that it is possible because I mean I'm seeing it. I was just watching Manchester United play right now. They just won. So I'm seeing it happen in other countries. In this country, there are states that don't necessarily have a lot of guidelines, unfortunately. Florida, <laughs> Texas, Arizona, uh, which we see it's spiking. Um, here in California, the cases are going up, but the hospitalization thing relatively flat at the moment. So there's a lot of there's a lot of things that can go wrong. The number one thing that get that's going to get this to happen is just constant, constant testing. I mean, that's really it. I mean, if you just consistently test people and your players actually take responsibility, if they take the responsibility to not go out, not club, not party, not go to all out as much as you can, it can be done. So a lot of responsibilities on the players, unfortunately. They're the ones that are taking the risk. They're the ones that are taking the chances. I can see it happening, but I could also see a lot of players testing positive and baseball still trying to power through. Can I mean, you imagine though, but just imagine this, imagine Clayton Kershaw gets COVID yeah, and then he passes it on to David Price and then he passes it on and it goes, and it goes through the, the, the Dodgers clubhouse. Yeah. And now the Dodgers are a bunch of dudes that you don't necessarily know their names, but they're all wearing Dodger uniforms. That that's the team we got. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the other guys got sick. So you know, what, what could be or could have been theoretically a magical year, we got sick in this locker room. Somehow these guys didn't get sick. Can 100% see that. I mean that, and I just wonder if they can actually pull it off. Can they really, and this is part of the storyline, right? This is yeah. part of what makes this interesting to somebody like me. Can you really take human beings, put them on airplanes, move them to different parts of the country, have them be in human interactive space with other human beings, and then have them do it all. Having all these people in constant motion, can baseball really get through these 60 games? I don't see why they couldn't, as long as they abandon the whole theory of if someone gets sick, we're in trouble. Like if Clayton Kershaw or Mookie Betts gets coronavirus, you got to keep going without them. If that's the plan, then game on, man. I think yeah. they'll finish. Now, if you get to the World Series and one of those guys gets sick, you can't stop the World Series. And so that can't the feature can't be if four or five guys get sick, now we have to pull back and go, well, what do we do now? Mm -hmm. You just gotta keep going. And I think that's what's gonna happen in the NFL. Not to change the subject, but I think they're gonna be planning on if somebody gets they gets it, you're out. That's it. Somebody else put them in. Treat it like a pull hamstring. The Baseball difference is have to do the same thing. But the, here's the difference. The difference is Major League Baseball has a Major League Ball Club, and they got a triple-A team that those guys are theoretically ready to play. They got a double-A team with guys that are not too far away from being ready to play. They got a single-A club with a bunch of kids who are eventually, hopefully, going to get there. And they got more teams in different leagues. Baseball has hundreds of players to put on a Major League roster. In football, you have 50 – you got 50-something active roster guys, 52 or 53, 53 active roster guys, 10 guys on a practice squad, 63 guys. Your offensive line gets gets COVID. Okay. Where are you going to find an offensive line? We just had two failed leagues, man. The AAF and the XFL, there are bodies out there. To totally, totally fair point that there are human bodies out there. But if you – Talking about quality? If, Right, but if you're, but well, you think about it, if your offensive line gets gets sick on a Monday and you've got a game on a Sunday and you got to replace five guys on your offensive line and you go him 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 and him they all played in the A whatever FL and this guy played in the USFL forty years ago and he just played in the <laughs> WWE's league, but the point is they're human bodies, but they don't know the system, they don't know the plans, they don't know yeah. they're going to get somebody hurt. Imagine and, putting a, a like a five AAF guys or five XFL guys. To protect Patrick Mahomes, yeah, or Tom Brady, yeah, like it's just it's. It, but we we're in this country now where we're okay with people getting COVID. I don't know when we when yeah. we made that decision. I don't know when it happened, but we're in. That's the mentality that the government and the health officials have taken. We're cool if you get COVID as long as you don't spread it, and that's where we're at, dude. There's no doubt. I think that a lot of people are of this opinion. I'd like to just get it so I can get it over with. Yeah, but that's also now being proven. Uh, that's been debunked. Not, that's also not the way it's going yeah. now anymore. It's like now they're now. saying that the antibodies can expire within a month, within two months. There's not a specific time frame that gives you immunity forever. I'm and, and not now, saying that. I don't know that is either. I'm just saying that people are like, look, if it's going to happen, if I'm going to get it, yeah, I just like to get it over with. And by the way, how many young, how many young 
professional athletes are thinking that exact same thing. Right. Let me get it so I can get get it it now so I can go to this damn tournament in in, in Orlando or in, in baseball and not worry about it. In addition to that, if you have type A blood, you are now more you are more likely to get it according to studies that have now been that have now come out after everybody's gotten it. So if you have type A blood and you get this, the chance of you getting it again are also high. I think just think to go back to your question, Scott, though, like about can they do it? Yes, because we've decided as a country that it's okay if you get it. Just don't spread it. Like that's why it's going to be able to finish. And that, and, 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 and hey, by the way, baseball again. You may have a bunch of guys at the end of the year who are wearing your team's uniform that you were not planning on seeing in that team's uniform should your frontline guys get sick. And and so in baseball, you got a whole bunch of other players that when you pull them up and you go, hey, here's your bat, go hit. It's the same at any level. It's just mm-hmm. the difference of talent. In football, you got to teach a whole new playbook to a new group of people, and that's how people are going to get their heads ripped off. And in, in baseball, the minor league system, if you bring a guy up, that counts as service time. And so the Padres have a ton of guys in their system that people are waiting for this guy to come up and waiting for that guy to come up. What if you got to start calling those dudes up? I also you know? read today that there was going to be, to your point, there's going to be a lot of teams that call up guys that they have no intention of playing at all, but they just want these star prospects to get some baseball under them to practice, to be around it. And they have no intention of playing them at all. They just want, they just need them to play baseball somewhere. Hmm. Well, listen, here's the thing. I'm asking the question about can baseball make it? Look, when you start to see basketball players who I think most of us probably thought, look, if I were a professional athlete and they found a way for me to go back to work and I were getting back on to collecting those fat paychecks and I'm young and I'm healthy. Hell yeah, man. Give me my uniform. Give me my sneakers. Tell me where to show up and let's freaking play ball. Mm -hmm. Well, when you see a player like Avery Bradley from the Lakers who says, Hey, look, you know what? Um, this whole bubble thing, not working for me, not, not working for me. And you go, well, Hey, tell me more. What's the deal. And he says, look, I've got a kid who could be at risk. I'm not bringing my kid into the bubble. I'm not going to live in the bubble and possibly bring it home eventually to my family. I'm out. And I, I've thought all along that there will be plenty of players that choose to not play because they've either got enough money. They're not on a team that's going anywhere. They have family concerns, whatever the case may be. But here's a guy on a team who many people think is championship caliber. And, you know, we talk about the presence of LeBron. If LeBron says we're going to play, we're going to play. Here's one of LeBron's guys saying, I'm out. I'm not going to play. Forfeiting the money, forfeiting the possibility of a championship. Um, You know, as he said, hey, look, my teammates are it for me, but my family takes priority. You know, I I got a lot invested into this team. I got a lot invested into my family too. Um, I'm choosing family right now over basketball team and championship pursuit. And and I would I would take a guess here that as one guy does it, more and more and more will do it as well. Uh, we'll see if I'm right. Generally, I'm not. I'm never really right about anything. But I, uh, I, I find this to be very interesting. I don't think you're going to see a flood of guys do this. Again, he and Trevor Ariza have personal issues that, that concern their families directly. Trevor and, Ariza. And might there be others? Maybe. 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 If that's the overwhelming sentiment of why guys are not playing, then I'm okay with that. And if it gets to 200 guys, you just got to call it a day and say, hey, man, there's too many sick people with too many sick family members. We can't do it. But if again, if you're one of these, I'm not doing it because of social unrest, I can't get with that. Don't don't bring that to me because you were not out front with the plan. So now don't tell me you don't want to go back to work because of this particular situation. If you have a medical condition that is then related to your family, I got it, I'm with you. Outside of that, I don't wanna hear it. Put your damn shoes on and play basketball, man, period. Because there are people out here going through worse, trying to deal with this shit, and you are basically copping out because, because of what you perceive to be a heavy situation for quote unquote 
black people. I, I'm not just not. I just can't get with that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can. I can get with it. I I think that if you feel compelled to be a leader at this time in U.S. history, and you're a star NBA basketball player, and you feel like COVID's got me really concerned because of a family member, but I also really don't think we should be playing right now because I feel like we're taking away from the message. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say I'm not playing because I do have these COVID concerns and I think they're legit, but simultaneously I'm planning on doing something that is an action oriented, uh, uh, something. Okay. Boom. Here's the, I got it. Look, big Scott. Let me talk to big Scott. Is big Scott there today? Big Scott in the house. My seven big, footer there. Big, big Scott cap. in the house. Big cap. Okay, my, big, my, big cap my, in the house. Big cap. My seven footer. Listen, you you a multiple time All Star, you couple time defensive player, you, you led the league in scoring. What happened in the Senate today? I don't know what happened. Boom! See, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. When you, if you ask these guys who are sitting there not playing because of social unrest, yeah. ask them what happened in the Senate today. They won't know. They Big Cap don't know. Go, they're right. They won't know. So Big I Cap of practicing. It. Big I Cap is working on free throws. Right. Big Cap working on the sky hook. Come on, man. <laughs> I don't want to hear that, dude. I get it. Well, maybe he knows. I don't know. I I had listen. Let me just say this. I left my. By the way, remember I told you guys my whole thing about how I'm not going to have meetings outside of the house anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've let it happen. So I had a Damn. meeting this morning at 8 a.m. I got home at 10 a.m. and I had another meeting at 10 a.m. And now after we're done, I got to go somewhere else and I got to go meet with somebody. And I I don't know how I've let this happen where people have talked you know me why. out of their home. You ain't quarantined out of, no more. Out of my home. People have Zero. talked me out of my house and I'm pissed and I'm going back to my original rule tomorrow of oh, yeah. no more external meetings. All meetings happen right here on Zoom. No more external meetings. I so, don't believe that. So, so here's the deal. Big Cap don't know what happened in the Senate today. But <laughs> maybe Avery Bradley does. But Right. But that's okay because Avery Bradley's not playing because of his child's medical condition. If Dwight Howard told me he didn't want to play because he believes this time, and well, his agent says that he doesn't want to play because he thinks black people need to come together. Okay, Dwight, what happened in the Senate today? Did you know that the Democrats in the Senate blocked a uh, a police a policing bill? Did you know that? Because what about did, it? They blocked it. What did they block? Republicans put forward a, a bill to uh um uh, uh uh oh uh oh someone doesn't uh -oh. know either uh oh no. <laughs> practices and patterns in policing because <laughs> it, it, the way that has to be said the practices and patterns of policing bill that was put forward in the Senate today. By Republicans got blocked by Democrats. There were three Democrat, two Democrats, one independent, who voted with the Republicans, and the rest of the Democrats held firm and said, "No, we're not voting for this because it doesn't outlaw chokeholds," which is how we got here. So that's why. If <laughs> sorry, it took me a while to get that out. Big Cap didn't know that. That's that's why. If you're going to take that stance, you should know these kind of things because you're trying to help bring about police reform. That's why you're not playing. Big Cap didn't know. I'm glad I was able to help Big Cap on that. Thank you. Now Thank go you, back Big to Brown. That hook shot. All right, I'm back. All right, listen, um, I'm going to keep rolling, though, because there's other things I'd like to get to. We're being presented by Corky's Pest Control, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, and Tory Holistics. I'm shouting out the Total Tea Clinic, Rock and Wine Tours, SMS Global, Coast Care Partners, and Wicked Graphics. Okay, let me keep rolling. You know what's one of our biggest problems right now in America? Let me, let, me, let me tell you one of our biggest problems. We love to try and find racism. We're, we're looking for racism. We want to find racism. And you know what else we want to do? We want to find racists who are practicing racism. And then we want to out those racists practicing racism because what we're looking to do as a society is label who the racists are and to that point we're so wound tight right now as a society i mean seriously we are so wound tight you say one thing and you are a racist for life, ruin your career, ruin your profession, embarrass your family. We're looking for racists. We're looking for racists so much that the only black 
driver in NASCAR goes into his garage, <laughs> sees a rope that, you know, you use to close the garage door. He didn't, though. You, you, I'm telling the story. Work with me here. Humor me. <laughs> but you, okay? Okay. 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 Let's, let me rephrase it. There's a rope on the garage door that looks like a noose, but it's very customary to lift the garage door by rope and yank the garage door down by the rope. And we're so consumed with everything being about racism that when the rope is seen, here's what comes to mind. Oh my God, he's the only black man who drives in NASCAR. Is that rope? Is that that's rope? Is that a noose? Oh my God! There's a noose in the only black guy's garage. And the next thing you know, we all, we, we all, we're all like, oh damn, that is messed up, man. That is messed up. Who would ever, in today's climate, be so freaking insensitive? And by the way, make the whole sport look stupid. And then, oh my God, everybody. Everybody wants to show support and love. Let's let's have a parade, man. This is awesome. This is great. NASCAR is leading the change. This is great. And then the FBI comes in and they go, yeah, it was uh, just it was all a big misunderstanding. You'll have to excuse us. Just a big misunderstanding. It wasn't really a noose. It was just a rope. They pull out the garage. They take the garage door down. Not really a big deal. No hate crime here. No racism here. You know, nothing to see here. And then... Bubba Wallace, who I didn't know who he was until earlier this week, goes on with Don Lemon on CNN. Now, I know who Don Lemon is. Even my 13-year-old daughter, when I've got CNN on, she goes, God, they're just all over the president. I go, oh, you here, you want to see what happens the other channel? I turn to Fox News. She goes, oh, okay. So they love every. I go, yeah, you get it. You're 13. On with Don Lemon on CNN. It was a noose. I was like, yeah, I mean, but it was like a rope and it was tied a certain way in a knot and it was in your garage. And I guess it had been there. And the FBI said it wasn't a hate crime. And Bubba was like, no, man, it's a freaking noose. I don't care what anybody says. It's a noose. And I'm kind of pissed that people are questioning my integrity when it comes to this noose. I'm like, no, not really questioning your integrity. Just that it wasn't, uh, according to the FBI now, it wasn't a noose. It wasn't a threat. It wasn't a, um, hey, we're going to get you. You know, you're the only black guy in our sport. We're going to get you. Hey, we're intimidating you. So this whole, I, my point to all of this rant is this. Let's all catch our breath for a second. Let's all pump the brakes since I'm talking NASCAR. This is a NASCAR conversation, isn't it? Let's pump the brakes. Not everything is racist. Sometimes you might want to just say, hmm, interesting that somebody tied a knot that way. I mean, we all jumped on the story. Racists, bastards, wonderful people, NASCAR. Look at the change. Only to find out that's not the story the way it really was supposed to be. What do you got to say, Big Brown? I see you with that smile. Okay. Let's, let's. You're correct in the sense that the FBI said it was not a hate crime. Mm -hmm. So the noose had been in there for over a year. They did say it was a noose. Okay, now, can I ask a question? I just have to sure. ask a question. Yes. Um, you ever gone fishing? Hell no. I'm from the south side of Chicago. Ain't no fish. Ain't no fish on the south side? Hell no, ain't no fish. You go to the store to get some fish. You ain't put no, no ropes, no water to get no fish. I've gone fishing a lot when I was a kid, and there were lots of different techniques to, to tie knots, lots of different techniques. One of them, I, I never called it a noose, but it's what it was. I mean, it's you tie it around, you feed it through, you pull it up, there's 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 you know slack to it, and then it ties up. I mean, there's ways to tie knots. That isn't that what a noose is? I mean, maybe I don't know what a noose is. Maybe this is another dumb, naive white privilege moment. Can I just update the story since we're yeah. Since we're in, in the middle of this, he uh, he just put a statement up not that long ago saying it's been an emotional few days. First off, I want to say how relieved I am that the investigation revealed that hit, this wasn't what we feared it was. Mm -hmm. I want to thank my team, NASCAR and the FBI, for acting swiftly and treating this as a real threat. I think we'll gladly take a little embarrassment over what the alternatives could have been. Make no mistake, though, some will try. 
This should not detract from the show of unity we had on Monday and the progress we've made as a sport to be a more welcoming environment for all. God, whoever wrote that, that is really well written. Mm-hmm. Gosh, that's good. He got everything in and he and he was he he admitted like that there's a little bit of embarrassment that it wasn't what we thought it was. And going on CNN saying it was. Right. But yet, you know what? It's better than what the alternative is, which is, you know, racist hate act. Um, I don't know who wrote that. You just read it brilliantly, but whoever wrote it should get a raise because that is really well written. That's when you're creating damage control, but you're but you're also saying at the same time, but don't take away from that beautiful moment that NASCAR had just the other day on Monday when everybody paraded Bubba Wallace out. Don't don't take away from that. And yeah, there's a little egg on my face. And yeah, I was insistent that it was a noose, but better than the alternative. I thought that was really well written. Drew Brees should hire that guy. (laughs) (laughs) So should Mike Gundy. Gundy But again, it was a noose. Now, you say that there are a million ways to tie a knot. I've never been in a Boy Scouts. The Boy Scout teach you tons of ways to tie knots. You're absolutely correct. The reason why it's still offensive that there was a noose. Oh, Jesus. No. No. A knot is now offensive? Again, let me finish. (laughs) The reason why the noose, not a knot, the Uh noose, Uh I could have gone in there, tied a rope around there to pull it down that it wouldn't have been a noose. The reason why it being a noose in his garage is an issue is because the noose is what was used to murder black men in this country. I know, but John, but John, I mean, I got to fight back a little bit on this. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I mean, really, it's like, okay. The, the the rope. Let's just call it the rope for a but, moment. Hold on, let me let me. But by calling it a rope, mm-hmm. you're taking away from the significance of it being a noose. If or it, or you're adding too much significance to the way it's tied. Oh no! Absolutely, absolutely not. Because there's a historical context to having a noose when hanging black people in this country I, I, at a okay, time in our fair history. Fair enough. I, I accept that. I, I validate it. I accept it. I live with that understanding. But because the rope was there a year ago and it wasn't his personal garage and somebody tied a knot in a way that made it theoretically more convenient for them to, to use this rope to pull a garage door up and down, it's not, it had, the, in theory, Unless this person is like a KKK member who likes to just tie nooses in garages because he likes the symbolism of a noose, I could make the argument that somebody tied a knot. That knot was looked at and they went, oh my God, that, look at that. They tied it like a noose. And, and that's, that's the deal. I mean, why I don't, I, if it was his garage and he was targeted and it was a hate crime, that's one thing. If the rope was there and somebody chose to tie it in a certain way around the garage door, that's a completely separate story, is it not? In my opinion, a noose to a black man has a certain symbol to it, much like the Confederate flag has a certain symbol to black people. Certain statues in this country have certain symbolism to black people. So different things mean different things to certain people. And right, so but, to- but, but let me let me pose this to you. You ready? Mm-hmm. If the guy is in the garage and um, from a year ago or his guys, no, if, if the guy from a year ago posts a, uh, a, a swastika in the garage, right. Mm-hmm. And I come into the garage, mm-hmm. I look at it and I go, Oh my God, look at these anti-Semitic motherfuckers. They got swastikas in the garage. I know what a swastika means. Okay. Exactly. Yes. When I walk into a garage, white guy here. Okay. Remember I grew up in a garage. My father owned gas stations. And I know this, that, that these garage doors, It's very customary to have a rope to pull these garage doors down. White privilege guy here making another admission. When I walk into a garage and I see a rope on a garage door, I think of that as a way of opening and closing a garage door. And the knot, however you've chosen to tie it, is how you've chosen to tie it. I could have very easily have tied this knot. I swear to you, dude. I could have very easily have tied this knot and been like, yeah, this is probably the most effective way to tie this knot. You were on to a good point and you you didn't finish it. Let me help you. Go ahead. You go into a garage, there's a swastika on the wall. Mm-hmm. Now that swastika wasn't put there the day before you and your team put it in there. That swastika's been up there for a year. Yeah, when and I know go, what it means. Right. So when you go in there, are you offended by that swastika? Of course. Or not? Of course right. I'm offended. Yes, 
Yes, and so that's all I'm saying. But right, but it's just a piece of rope that was used to open and close the doors. What I'm trying to get at. And a swastika is just a painting. No, 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 no. A swastika <laughs> is, a, is a no, no. A swastika is a symbol of hatred. A rope is a is a thing that you might use to open and close a door. A rope fashioned as a noose, as in this particular case, to a black man is seen as offensive. I understand. I hear you. I completely understand what you're saying. All I'm trying to say is that I think what a noose is, maybe we should look it up. I think what the definition of a noose is, is a, is a way of tying a rope. Yes, I agree. Now, yes, that's correct. Okay. And so therefore it's a knot. And so there's double knots, there's triple knots. There's, I mean, to me, somebody may have said, this is the most effective way to pull the garage door down. And I understand what it means symbolically to yourself or mm -hmm. to Bubba Wallace, but I'm saying it wasn't put there or tied that way to be a hate crime. And what I'm saying is if it was a triple knot or a double knot, I don't think he would have had a problem. What if somebody would have looked at that triple knot or double knot and gone, what the hell is that? That looks like a freaking noose. I mean, it's, well, according it's, to his statement, I don't think he has a problem with it anymore. I mean, it's what it sounded like. It's like, okay, it was a, it was a misunderstanding. It was a knot. And I get what you're saying, Browner, about the noose. And obviously, you know, you, it's not a surprise to anybody what you're saying. But like, if he's saying it was a moment, it was a, it was a misunderstanding. It was a moment of embarrassment for us that we reacted that like that. So what, are, what is, what is the story here? What I'm, my story is this, and I'll, I'll give Browner the final word on this. My story is this: we in America are wrapped more tightly than ever before with regards to race relations, at least in my lifetime. And, um, and when we see things, we immediately jump to conclusions. And my suggestion for everybody is let's, th this has been my suggestion the whole way through. Let's talk about this stuff. But before let's Browner get gets the final word real quick, like yeah. you guys, I don't know who said it yesterday, but I think both of you said, well, it's the garage of a NASCAR garage. It's yeah, worth we, millions of dollars of, of things in there. There's got to be video in there. So where's the video? You guys want to see a video of a guy from a year ago that's placing this? I would love it. Because if the guy's wearing a white hood, I'd be like, oh, man, shit. That's some racist shit right there, that noose. And if it's just a random dude who's tying a knot because he's putting the door up and down, I'd be like, see, it really wasn't a big deal. I think to, I think to squash this entire fiasco, show the knot. <laughs> Because if it's yeah. just a knot, then great. Yeah. If that's it's it. a new, if it's a noose, that's bad. And I agree with you. We are wound tight in this country racially at this point, and I'm absolutely proud of, and I'm happy that we're wound tight because we spend way too much time being too loose about racism in this country, and it's time that we start calling people out for being racist. Yeah, um, which is why you know we had this argument a few weeks ago about Grant Napier. If if Grant Napier were a racist, um, then then I'm surprised that Chris Weber. And uh, Boogie Cousins didn't call him out a long time ago for being a racist. You know, I mean, this whole being fired over a phrase on Twitter is still, I mean, you just think about the news cycle, how, how things have kind of just chilled a little, you know, I mean, if, if he would have said this in a different time, I, I don't know. I, it's, it's just, I feel bad for people for getting fired for, for their, you know, for a phrase friend that, of, that, 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 by the way, many people didn't understand. Friend of the show had a, a friend of the show. Paul Rudy had an all lives matter moment on Twitter as well. I, I don't know about this. All lives matter. Uh, Did you talk to him about it? No, not at all. And I haven't seen anything on it. So tell me about it. Ask him about it. I don't, I don't want to go into detail about it because I don't have all the details that I would like to present a certain topic like this. Cause this is not a national story. This is someone that we know and I don't want to put anything out there that could be miscued or misunderstood as wrong. So until I get all the information, I, I'm not all I will say is he did put All Lives Matter on Twitter and he received a ton of backlash for it. And I think that would be a great person to have a conversation. How with long? Him. How long ago did he do that? Uh, a couple of days ago, I think it was. Come on, really? In this world, in this world, if you're white and in media and you put out something that says All Lives Matter, I find that. Well, it's either it's Ask either. Him. It's Ask either dumb. Him. It's either irresponsible. It's either tone deaf. It's either it's or, or or you know you're planning on going to work for Fox News. I guess. I think he. I think he tried to make a joke and it did not land. Come on, really? You can't make a joke with all lives matter nowadays, can you? I don't even know comedians that can do that. Hey, I what's the story? What's the story with Jimmy Kimmel? 
It, it, I read somebody uh, yesterday said that, that, that they found um, that there was, and I, I don't know the story, Alex, maybe you could pull it up because do you know the story? He said the N word um, in a recording when he was on the man show, I think. And he's been, and he's used blackface multiple times. And now he's taking a, a random like two or three month vacation from his show. Now that all this is coming out, he announced last week that he's taking a vacation. And now because he goes after the right so much, the right is now asking the left, are you going to go after one of your own that does blackface and say the N word? So mm -hmm. that's the story. Well, isn't that interesting? Because Jimmy Kimmel is a very likable guy. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Kimmel's become incredibly successful. And and Jimmy Kimmel has the, the protection, I'll use the word protection, of being a comedian where, where comedians or artists get away with a lot more. Okay. Um, but I would ask this question. Um, if, and I haven't heard these recordings and I've, I've never seen Jimmy Kimmel use this, um, the black face. I've never dressed seen up a shack. He dressed up as shack. Yeah. That's, that's offensive. Is that it's blackface? Yeah. But can't you, but you can't be a white person In black and face? play the role of a black person. Yes. But not with black face. You do it. But here's, here's why. And this is, this is, I'm glad, I'm glad this unfortunately got brought up. Uh, our friend of the show does impersonations of everyone. You know what he never has to do? Blackface, because he's great at it. You well, do impressions of Shaq and question. Charles Barkley all the oh, wait. time. Wait, I have a question. Alex, is there any way you could pull up Frank Caliendo? I'm sure there's a still, sh still shot somewhere of Frank Caliendo in character as Charles Barkley. And and this uh, this Jimmy Kimmel thing you got Browner I don't know the story so so Kimmel said the N word and is it something that was said like somebody was recording it backstage and they were all saying things I mean what what's the context do you know I don't know but I saw that that, that exactly what you're saying that people were going saying okay so you've gone after this person you've gone after Drew Brees for saying stand for the anthem is anybody going to go after Jimmy Kimmel for being on tape is using the N-word and for having done comedy sketches, play, white guy playing black guy wearing black makeup. Here's the, here's, here's the interesting part about that, right? The right screams that you, you always come after all people. You want them to lose their job. They never lose their job. I'm pretty sure Jimmy Kimmel's going to lose his job because of this. You think so? Really? Should, should he lose his job because of this? I don't know. That's not my place to say. But a lot of people on the right have done – Things similar to what Jimmy Kimmel's done, they lose a couple of sponsors, they don't lose their job. Jimmy Kimmel's going to lose his job because the left, quote unquote, they don't play with that. Do you guys think, let me ask you a question. Has, have we heard of one story of one sponsor dropping Drew Brees? Not yet, no. Not that I know of. Didn't. Not one. I mean, I, I'm trying to think of, you know, he's had... Um, for example, what's the name of the, uh, the the medicine you take when you got the flu or the cold? Uh, NyQuil, DayQuil. NyQuil. NyQuil. He, so he's got a NyQuil, DayQuil commercial. Um, Breeze has had commercials for like laundry detergent. I'm sure we could probably look this up. We've not heard one piece of publicity from a sponsor that said, we've dropped our business with Drew Breeze based on the controversy that was created about the anthem, right? Nobody that we've heard of has dropped him and put out publicity around that. But he does, also went into super cleanup mode really, really fast. Okay, fair enough. But does Jimmy Kimmel have that sort of what I will call, um, does, does he have that shield around him that people, people will say about Breeze, they say this, you ready? Breeze isn't a racist. He's not, he's not a racist. He may have been tone deaf. He may not have known American history, but I don't really feel like he's a racist. Let me pose the same thing to you about Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel, hey, he's a good guy. I like him. Is he a racist? I'm just asking. Breeze has not lost sponsorship. He's not been fired by the NFL. He's not lost his job as the Saints quarterback. Why do you suppose Jimmy Kimmel will lose his job? Because what Drew Breeze did was tone deaf. What Jimmy Kimmel did was actually racist to wear blackface, say the N-word while impersonating Shaq. Question, question. Why was Jimmy Kimmel not, not grilled for playing Shaquille O'Neal in costume and makeup? Why was he not grilled for it at the time? Because funny you said it. You just spoke about it. Because now people are absolutely uptight about racism. 
the mm. come on really like like it, it's a fe- what he did then mm-hmm. is so offensive today that he should lose his job same thing as statues getting taken down right now dude it's the same context of it why not why did we build and prop up these statues of things and now we're tearing them all down whether you agree or don't that's what is happening right now that's right. should answer all your questions about why okay, now so, so jimmy kimmel dude, like jimmy a statue kimmel, is jimmy, being going to be torn down jimmy fallon also in blackface apologized for it uh tina fey asked NBC Universal to take down all four episodes of 30 Rock that had white actors in blackface, including John Hamm, Mad Men, and they and she's been apologizing for blackface. Frank Caliendo has been in blackface. He at, no one's talked about that yet. It's just the thing that it was okay then, I guess, because obviously everybody was doing it. But in the time we live now, in this cancel culture that we live in, and and calling people out for what was wrong, that's going to answer all your questions. You said okay. we're wound up tight. Okay. We're, everybody's in it. So let me let me let me tell you who else you get fired. I am going to start a crusade to get one of my favorite comedians. By the way, he's not my favorite anymore. Just so you know, I don't like him anymore because because of what he did thirty years ago. But I don't like him anymore. Billy Crystal, Billy Crystal on Saturday Night Live used to play Sammy Davis Jr. Have you ever seen this? I have not. Oh my God, it's hilarious and brilliant. And what makes it so goddamn funny is the fact that he's dressed. Like Sammy Davis Jr. His face is made up black. His hair is exactly like Sammy's. He's got on the glasses. He's walking around like this, babe. I mean, it's it it is it is one of his great bits. No one thought it was racist. They just said he's a white comedian playing a black actor. So Frank Caliendo, when he goes and does Charles Barkley in the future, can put on a bald cap, can put on a suit, but his face remains white and and by the way eddie murphy in one of my favorite bits of all time where he dresses up as a white guy to go get free stuff like white people get now because how dare a black man dress up like a white man i this gets back to my entire point and you can have the last word dude my entire point is this we're really wound tight right now and I just think we ought to stop calling every single thing we can find racist. And we ought to kind of look at things on a case by case basis. We ought to look at who the people are that we're singling out. We ought to really think about why we're into this world of tearing people down all the time. You guys call it now this new phrase, cancel culture. It's fascinating to me that, that a guy who is a comedian plays a character years and years ago and he's got to pay the price for it all these years later. That's my thought is we're wound extremely tight. Brown, take the last word. Blackface and what Eddie Murphy did, which was hilarious. I don't doubt what Billy Crystal did was hilarious. I didn't see it. Blackface is offensive because at a time in this country, black people were not allowed to be in films. And so they portrayed them. I understand. Yeah, I got overzealously yeah. at, with black face. And so mm-hmm. that's why that's offensive. Mm-hmm. At no point in history has a black man gotten a job to dress up like a white man in the movies in the 20s because they had plenty of white people doing movies. Mm-hmm. And so that's why that's offensive. And mm-hmm. that's why at this point today, it's met with such anger because, again, I'm happy we're in this moment because that racism shouldn't have ever been tolerated from the beginning. Jimmy Kimmel should have been grilled because when they hired him to do that job, they probably knew he did that. And they let they hired him anyway. It was wrong then. It's wrong now. So now the only difference. Yeah, it was it was offensive. then. How could me too? Offensive doesn't equal accepted doesn't mean that it wasn't offensive. That's right. kind of but, what I'm but, but I mean, but I'm is it like are you like when you watch and I'm just being I'm being totally honest here with you guys. W- w- tell me what you think. When you see Frank Caliendo dressed up as Charles Barkley, do you think that's inherently racist? He's not wearing I me personally, I've never seen him wear blackface and do it, but I've seen him do the Charles Barkley impression. It's hilarious. But isn't blackface? I, here's what I think. I, I, I watched the, the film 13th that you had recommended. What did you think? I liked it. Um, I thought it was very interesting. I, I will tell you that I didn't know that when slavery was abolished, 
that the way for um, for Americans who did not agree with that, the way for those white people to essentially get their slaves back was to have them arrested for nothing. Yeah. And so, so, so you're black in America in the, I don't know what year we're talking about, 18 something, early 1900s, I guess. Gosh, my history is horrendous. And, and, and you're black and you've been freed as a slave. And the only way they can re-enslave you is to convict you of a crime. So you're standing there on the corner with some pals because you got nowhere to go. And they come up to you, the cops, and they go, you're under arrest for what? For loitering. What do you mean loitering? I'm standing here. Yeah, that's loitering. You're under arrest. So then they take these guys and they put them back in chains and they put them in, in, in prisoner clothes and they go, here's your shovel back. Here's your hammer back. Get to work. And so, so that's American history. I don't know. Okay. I'm learning it through all of these black historians, but there are times when I, as someone who's trying to help be a positive force and change in my own little way, there are times where I've got to push back a little bit because as you're teaching me what you find offensive, I'm trying to tell you and, and teach you why I'm not really offended by it. And what kind of irritates me, not from you, but from just the, the whole like concept is that we're going back and punishing people. Where was the offense then? How come nobody's been offended? Has Charles Barkley ever come out and said, Frank Caliendo's a racist for dressing up like me? Did Sammy Davis Jr. ever say, Billy Crystal's a racist because he dressed up like me? And did Shaquille O'Neal ever say that Jimmy Kimmel is a racist because he dressed up like me? If they did, and I missed it, another moment of being white and privileged, sorry, but I don't think it happened. So I'm just saying that I'm pushing back an ounce by saying, I didn't, I, I, I blackface playing a, a black slave because you would never dare put a black actor in a film in the twenties. That's racism playing Charles Barkley or Shaquille O'Neal. My perspective respectfully submitted is I don't find it racist. I don't have a problem with the pushback. I think the pushback is positive because the pushback is out of trying to figure out why something is racist or why a person would feel a certain way about a certain thing that they're discussing. So I'm glad that the pushback is there because you're asking questions that people want to ask, but they don't want to be seen as racist is what we go back to as before. But these things that are seen racist now that were allowed then, people still felt the same way. You just didn't have the power or the voice behind that to then speak on it. I guarantee you if Shaq would have seen Jimmy Kimmel doing that and using the N-word, he wouldn't have been okay with that. Now, I don't think Jimmy Kimmel is racist per se, but I think that action, because of the, the, the people who he rolls with, for lack of a better explanation, he will lose his job. He will, lose, also it, possible, he will lose his job. It's also possible to not be racist and still be very offensive. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, not, not everything has to go straight to racism. You could just That's be an point. offensive person. But I do have this question, and I don't even know if there's an answer to it because JB, you talked about, and so did I, like the whole stay woke thing. So I didn't know then. But I know now, like there's no freaking way in hell Jimmy Kimmel will go blackface and say the N word right now because nope. because he learned he maybe he didn't know then what he knows now. So at what point what where do we cross the line as like okay I'm gonna let that I'm gonna let that pass or I'm not gonna let that pass like what is there is no definition there's no dictionary for it and that's where that's where this discussion comes from because there's no playbook on what's happening in the country right now. And does so, Jimmy Kimmel deserve to be fired? In my opinion, yeah. Me personally, yeah. I would I would say yes. Okay, Me Alex. Personally, I would say yes. Does Kimmel deserve to be yeah. fired because of something that happened on a different network at a different time? Yeah. Does he deserve to be fired? Me personally, I I would say no, just because of what he's done now. But that's just I mean he's probably going to get fired. But it, at the same time, then shouldn't everybody be fired that that's done it? Well, not just I mean, not just see that's the thing like everything in this country is getting politicized like crazy it's not that it's not that like some random person unearthed this stuff about kimmel it's that he's being attacked by the right the way he's attacked the right himself on his show for certain things that's the so that that's where it is like, politics but does that make it wrong no 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 it does and it doesn't make kimmel's um kimmel's dressing up as shack wrong either i'm telling you that Listen, should should Quentin Tarantino go back to Pulp Fiction 
and take out every time the N word is uttered by someone other than a black actor. See, but that's different, though. Why? It's that's art. That's different, right? That's a that's an interpretation of art. You're reenacting something, or you're creating something from a real life circumstance where those people interacting in the film. That's a character being played. And Jimmy so that- Kimmel's playing Shaquille O'Neal. He happens to be African American. His skin is darker. I want to get into character. I want to have a bald head. I want to have my complexion a certain way. I want to talk a certain way. I'm trying to do a character. If Quentin Tarantino did a movie based in blackface where they did that, yeah, he needs to take that down. Yeah, he needs to remove that. But saying the N-word in a Quentin Tarantino movie, which happens all the time, by the way, is to reinforce the moment and time period in which the conversation is being had. I would never, I've never seen a Quentin Tarantino movie where they've said the N word where I would felt offensive and felt like it was unnecessary. It was in the, it was in the flow of the conversation and in a time period in which that's the way that people talked. Yeah, but dude, it's a white guy having the audacity to write the N word for black actors. If I'm a black actor, I'm like, how dare you? Well, it, then you probably would never work with Quentin Tarantino <laughs> as a black actor. I gotta tell you. You mean when Big Cap, when, when Big Cap gets a role in the next Quentin Tarantino film? Listen, if if Big Cap is in the, is in the next film with fake Bruce Lee and they're recreating the fight scene between Bruce Lee and and uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar and Big Cap don't wrote that role because Quentin Tarantino wrote it, you gonna miss a big check, brother, because Quentin Tarantino <laughs> don't miss. <laughs> All right, I thought we were going to talk sports today. We were, and we started talking about sports. Alex. And, and somehow, so, yeah, something came in with where? How did we get to Jimmy Kimmel? You brought it, Alex. Up. Alex no, no, but there, but there was something prior to that. There was something that we were oh, talking Bubba about. Wallace thing. It was Bubba. See, it was sports. It was Na- NASCAR. That's NASCAR. That's NASCAR talk. Is what that is right there. The whole thing was just not just NASCAR talk right now. That's right. That's, That's all it's been. All right, now let's get to it. Here is Grande Alejandro. With today's highlight of the day, man, being presented by Tory Holistics. It's time for the highlight of the day, man. Do you want to get high, man? I'm just really high. Highlight of the day brought to you by Tory Holistics. Go to Scott and BR. It looks like this beautiful little website. You click on the Tory Holistics banner and it shows you our promo code, which is Grande. G-R-A-N-D-E, Grande. What does that mean? It means you get 20% off with a minimum $75 purchase at Tory Holistics. And don't forget, they also have daily deals. Today is Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Yes. So on top of that, it's a 15% off of flour for Weed Wednesday. And tomorrow is Thirsty Thursday. Scott, 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 all drinks, 15% off. You know, my my girlfriend and I are actually um, going on a little road trip next week. And um, she actually said to me, she said, you need to get about a case of that. She told me, she goes, call Ruthie and get a case. We're going to be out of town for a few days. Have we announced that yet? We haven't really announced it yet, but I will tell everybody that um, next week. We're we're, about to now. Yeah, yeah, we should. We should let everybody know. Next week, we're taking the week off. Um, I think from my perspective, everybody here has worked really hard. Um, Not just creating the daily podcast, but, you know, there was a lot of work that went into the, you know, the race equality summit. Um, and, And so... And I think we're also gearing up now for what life is going to be like when we get back on the radio as we're sort of headed towards going, taking this show right now, making it longer, unfortunately throwing in commercial breaks, but the commercial breaks are on the radio. The online digital show continues even during commercial breaks. So I think as we're starting to head towards the real, the reality that, you know, radio could create a much longer day for us. It was my opinion that it was time for this whole crew to take a week off. So that's happening next week. This goes back to Sam, the cooking guy, who I, I know catches a lot of shit in our YouTube chat. That's but, shit. but but now we have so much content that people have not seen. You guys who are here on YouTube and on Facebook, you've seen it every day. But if you go to the Scott and BR Clips page, we're cutting up everything. So yesterday when we were talking about Dean Spano selling his house and moving out of San Diego, that, that stuff's cut up. When we're talking to Drew Brees about Tom Brady and, and, and you know, joining the division, that's cut up. When we're talking to Landon Donovan or James Blake about you know, race in America, those little clips are cut up. You can go to the, 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 the clips page and you see there's no views. Well, we haven't pushed those. We're going to be out of town for a week and we're going to be off the live broadcast for a week, but we're going to be pushing tons of, of content that people may have missed. That 
has always been Sam, the cooking guy's point is that you put this content in the bank, but don't just let it go day to day. Like in radio, keep reminding people of all this content. So we're going to take a week off from the live show and we'll be back on July 6th. So we'll make it through this week, take a week off Monday, July 6th. We're back. The radio ain't going to ruin my summer. As Scotty Pippen would say anyway, <laughs> um, I am a giant Laker fan. Uh, I love the Lakers. Probably my favorite American team. Um, I hated Magic Johnson, the the president of basketball operations. I thought he was terrible. I thought all he wanted to do was get attention for himself. He took all the credit, like for everything. He took credit for getting Anthony Davis, even though he wasn't even he the, even though he wasn't even there no more. And LeBron was going to Lakers no matter what, whether Magic was there or not. But let's not. It's not my highlight of the day. My highlight of the day is you all remember when Magic quit. One of the reasons right. that he stated was that he wanted to tweet again. That was what he wanted to do. I, I miss tweeting about Paul George. I miss tweeting about Kawhi Leonard. I miss having my opinions out there on Twitter. Well, guess what? Magic, you're able to tweet now. And what did he tweet yesterday? The most insightful tweet I've ever seen in my life. Avery Bradley not going to Orlando. What did Magic Johnson say? It's on the screen right now. The Lakers losing Avery Bradley is a tough loss and will make it more difficult for them to win the NBA championship. Thank you, Magic Johnson. Thank you for quitting. Because what would I ever do without that tweet? What would I ever do without that tweet? Your insight is so great. I love you, Magic Johnson. Thank you for quitting. <laughs> Damn, man, why are you going hard on Magic like that? I love, I love Magic Johnson. Like, I really do love that Magic. Magic is the best NBA follower. And the, the NBA follow you can get. Like, he is the best. If you follow NBA Twitter and you don't follow Magic Johnson, you're doing it wrong. That is why I, when he quit and he said, I want to tweet again, that's the kind of shit he would put up there that just makes you laugh. It just makes you like, you know what? Like, we're getting a little bit of normalcy back in our lives. Magic's tweeting bullshit again on Twitter. It's fantastic. <laughs> hey, All right. OJ never stopped tweeting. <laughs> OJ never stopped. Hey, look, uh, just saying. Uh, hey, it's, truly. it's yours truly. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, way to go, Alex. Uh, there's your highlight of the day, man. Presented by Tori Holistics. You can save 20% by using our promo code Grande. Gear up oh, for the man. weekend. And for us, we're, we're all, you know, we got a week off next week. So gear up. Tori Holistics and the website is scottmbr.com. Click on the Tori Holistics. I really, had, I really did have a what is you. Uh, I really did have a more of what is you doing. Yeah. But I had to do a highlight of the day. So when John's done, I would like to provide another what is you okay. doing. Here we go. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. <laughs> I'll do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> no way. I don't know. Browder, don't say are you for real? <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out. I right. hope it's the same All right, thing. here we go. Okay. All right, here we go. Hi, uh, here we go. What is you what doing? What is you doing? What are you what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What is you doing? Yo, so I'm gonna be quick about this because I want to hear what he has to say. And by, by same thing, I mean I hope he would mention Magic Johnson yeah. again is oh. what is you doing. My what is you doing involves the internet and a specific hashtag karen's gone wild look i think this is the greatest thing ever put on the internet whoever came up with the word karen for angry white women they are pissed about this they don't like it mm -hmm. i love it last night i gotta be honest with you i spent about an hour and a half on hashtag karen's gone wild <laughs> It was worth crazy, it. Crazy, dude. It was, it was literally worth it. Ah. It was better than any television show I could have watched on TV or any movie I could have watched on, on Netflix or Hulu or HBO Go or HBO Stop or HBO, whatever the hell the HBOs are. Hashtag, do yourself a favor, hashtag Karen's gone wild or just hashtag Karen. You will not regret it. It is an amazing display of angry, red-faced white women. Internet. In a good way. What is you doing? Mm. You know, somebody sent me a video yesterday. Um, one of the four cops who was oh, on yeah. George Floyd, the one guy who had the darker complexion, who you might have even thought was African American in some way. Um, not not the main guy who had his his knee on his neck. He was the but, rookie, right? But he's yes. one of the one of the other cops, right? And again, darker complected gentleman. So. Um, there's this girl, she walks up to him and he's in like a grocery store. And did you guys see this video? I did see yes. It. Dude. So here's this guy. Do you guys know his name? No. I don't know the cop's name either. So I'm glad I know George Floyd's name. I, I'm embarrassed to say I don't know the cop's name. I should probably know the name. But this cop who was one of the four cops on George Floyd 
is in a grocery store or a Walmart or a Target or something like it's that. Like a grocery store, yeah. Yeah. And he's in the self uh, checkout line, which I don't really like to use the self checkout line. I don't know. I don't. I, sometimes I think it's fun to go beep beep, but sometimes I feel like like I, I just I feel like I like to have the interaction with the That's person. That's where it's at now, dude. I don't What's like that? people touching my stuff. I call that the discount line. Some of yeah. my shit's about to be free. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so so anyway. Um, he's standing there and this girl recognizes him and she goes, Oh no, uh, uh, you are not in here right now buying groceries. Like you, what you just You're think not you, in can, jail? Right, you, you can just, what you just walk into a grocery store and buy groceries. Hey everybody, this is one of the cops that killed George Floyd. What? You didn't think I was going to recognize you. Maybe oh, I didn't you, see this video. Oh dude, you got a different it. video where this girl went up to him. She's like, are you, are you? And the guy's like, yeah. I'm one of the yeah, cops. Yeah, that's the same video. It's, uh -oh. it's like five minutes long. Oh, oh yeah. is it? Oh, yeah, I dude. The TikTok version. Oh, no. She keeps going and going and going. Oh, and I'm like thinking to myself, you know that when people say, wait for it, like I'm I'm waiting for like everybody in the store to like attack this guy and beat the ever living yeah. shit out of him. But as it turns out, to his credit, I will give this man some credit. You're being harassed. You're This woman is getting loud. She's threatening you. This is all going on the internet, right? Hey, look. This is America, okay? And while this guy's life is over, and while this guy is likely going to jail for the rest of his life, the judicial system is such that right now, he went to jail, he was charged, he posted bail, I have no idea how, and for some ungodly reason, this guy is in a fucking grocery store in public. Now, he's got a hat on and he's grown a beard, but somebody's going to recognize him and did harass him tried to humiliate him, did, posting it on the internet, more humiliation. But, but you know, it, it, you talk about, you guys mentioned this phrase, cancel culture. Oh my God. I mean, this video of this woman and this cop, this whatever, he, former cop, he is just sitting there. Like, I was thinking to myself, gosh, what if I was in that position? Like, excuse me, um, look, I know what you're trying to do. I'm screwed. It was a terrible tragedy. I feel awful. I'm fucked. My life is over. But I have to, I, I am allowed by law to be here right now, please get out of my face or kick my ass. But man, that was a freaking wild video, dude. I don't know how we got onto that subject. You brought it up. You did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you brought it I up. Guess that's your, wait, so the lady is your what is you doing? Ladies, what, is what you doing what or the cop doing? being out? The, both, okay. both are my what is you doing. Can I line it up a little bit? Do I it. Just have one final, it's quick, it's quick. Let me share my screen and I'll put it up for people. Uh, when, you, when you get a pushing cart, you're supposed to push the cart, right? That's normally how it works. Right. Uh, this guy decided to use his push cart as a carry basket. What? <laughs> what is he doing, dog? Why? Yeah. yeah. So that's my what is he doing for today? Hmm. What is he doing? What, what is, is he doing? doing? What is he that doing? doesn't even make any sense. All right, yeah. listen, speaking of what is you doing, I got to go um, because right. be, because I did it again. I made a plan where somebody let me talk my way out of coming out of the house. I can hear my daughters in the background brawling right now. Nice. Okay. And the laundry kept going. Oh, oh yeah, too. yeah. And so it's just been a crazy day. So listen, this is what happens when you broadcast at home. Thank you, Corky's Pest Control, 1-800-901-1102. Thank you, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299. Can you hear them? Yeah, you got Oh, they're go. brawling. They're go. brawling. Thank you, out. Tory Holistics and Total D Clinic and Rock and Wine and SNS cool. Global and Coast Care and Wicked Graphics. And thanks to the great friends. Like, comment, share, subscribe, do your thing. Come decided, hang out because there's a lot going on. We're getting closer and closer and closer. I know I keep saying that. And until tomorrow, peace.